Cool, yeah, so this is uh, probably one of my favourite spots in the whole Antarctic Peninsula. Uh, one of my favourite landings. You get the pleasure of coming up here and uh, standing and enjoying the views of this glacier. This is Nico Harbour and we've got a fantastic, quite fast flowing glacier piling down from the top of this peninsula. We're standing on the Antarctic mainland. So this is a uh, part of the extended West Antarctic ice sheet, albeit right out on the, uh, on the end of the peninsula where we are. And this glacier is moving down here, I think at the rate of probably about 50 centimetres a day, which is actually quite, quite rapid compared to many other parts of the world. One of the reasons is that this is a very mild part of the Antarctic. Day like today, it's uh, six degrees Celsius and it's actually been raining a little bit, which is not, not the most comfortable conditions, but it means that the glacier is very, very active. Warm air and rain has a, has a huge impact and a very immediate impact on the glacier. So we've seen a number of calving events today. You never know when they're going to happen. We've got some really precipitous looking cliffs down here, some uh, very precarious pillars look like they're peeling away from the edge of the, uh, the calving front. And this is because the ice is flowing down into the water and the water at the moment is a couple of degrees above freezing so it's, uh, it's above the melting point of the ice and it's melting away the foot of the calving front there, destabilizing the ice overhead which every so often is, is piling down into the water, a calving event so icebergs are being born. And you look up the glacier and we've got two very very obvious ice falls and a glacier by definition is a, a river of ice, so it's channelized by topography and it's flowing in a similar manner to a river, albeit far more slowly. So these ice falls are equivalent to a waterfall, a very rapid flowing part of the, uh, of the ice channel here. You can see the crevasses uh, quite clearly. Oh, there's a little calving event right now, there we go. Beautifully timed, yeah. So that guy there is probably about the size of, hmm, a, a large, well a small bus actually. You can see ice has fallen down from the ice face but also floated up from beneath the water surface because there's a submerged portion. Here's some more. That's fantastic. You hear the thundering. Now that second piece there, that was the larger of the two and that was from beneath the water line. That was the buoyancy of the ice which is submerged thrusting up to the surface. It's a really good reminder when you're a zodiac cruising or you're in a boat around a calving face you don't just have to worry about what's going to fall from above there's also the submerged portion of this glacier which can cause pieces to break off and shoot up through the water like a like a whale breaching sometimes it's spectacular we're quite close to this glacier here this is probably mm, a kilometer and a half maybe around about well less less than a mile away from us it can be very difficult to gauge perspective uh, but we're quite lucky we were hearing that as it happened quite often with distant glaciers. By the time the, the sound reaches you, the event's already taken place. But yeah, very active glacier, this one. Uh, as I say, uh, I think it flows at roughly the rate of about 50 centimetres a day as much as, which is uh, quite rapid. And I worked that out from taking photographs at the start of the season and then photographs at the end of the season and seeing how the crevasses have moved downwards. And compared to the ship, which you can see over here to my left, uh, the superstructure of the ship is about 25 to 30 metres up towards the funnel and just comparing this ice face at its tallest point is about twice the height of the ship so you can get a bit of a visual reference there which is often very hard to do in the Antarctic as you can see because there aren't very many trees and shops and uh, <laughs> houses, school buses, <laughs> the things we normally take for granted. And one of the excellent things about somewhere like uh, somewhere like this is that the, the crevasses, they give us a, an indication of where the action's happening. So looking at all these fractures in the ice, they tell us where the ice is flowing and how rapidly it's flowing, you know, comparatively to other, other parts of the, uh, of the surface here. Ice is water in its solid form, but it's kind of better to think of it as more of a, a very, very viscous fluid. It flows. It doesn't just shatter. It is actually able to deform. So if you take a large chunk of ice, put it on a steel grill in your freezer and then put a weight on top of it, close the door, go away for a few days, you come back and that ice will start to ooze around the grill, deforming. But if you take the same piece of ice and throw it on the floor, it'll shatter because you're trying to make it flow too fast. So what we're seeing here, where the crevasses are, these are areas where the ice is having to move too fast, faster than it's able to deform. So it's showing us where the action is. And the direction of flow is always perpendicular to the orientation of a crevasse. And that, that helps us map in our mind's eye which direction the ice is moving in. It's 
So yeah, as I say, we've got the fantastic uh, ice falls here, heavily crevassed. And then along the distant side there, you've got what we call a bergschrund, which is the uh, that horizontal crevasse that runs along the top of the ice face, just below the cliff wall. And that shows that the ice is pulling away from the rocky, the rocky cliff there. And that's regularly being fed by avalanche debris from this precipitous ice face up on top of the cliff there. So quite often you'll hear a boom and a, and a, a collapse event and you look along the ice face, but actually it's a, uh, an avalanche taking place on one of these, one of these ice cliffs up top. But very, very active, and I see.